Hello, everybody. Welcome to Soul Food. My name is Simi Solo Okai. Welcome to the month of September. I know it's it's September 7th, but still, we are here, and I hope you're joining me from all over the world. It's exciting to see all of your comments and, um, you know, just your feedback as you watch uh, Soul Food. So I hope you're ready today. I hope you have your Bibles. Um, I'm pretty excited about my Bible. I finally got another Bible. <laughs> I got this for my birthday, so it replaces my, as my father would say, he called my old Bible a beat-up Bible. So this one is, is, is brand new, so I've, I've been excited to dig in. So today, um, I just have a message on my heart called, You Are Enough. You are enough. And, and that's what God wants to do you to know today that you are enough no matter where you are watching this from how you're feeling how old you are how young you are how broke you are uh, how rich you are um, you're enough because God created you and so I wanted us to go take a look in Exodus so if you have your Bibles let's go to Exodus 3 and Exodus 4 I'm gonna be reading sections from each um, of the chapters some of them I'll be skimming through some of them I'll be highlighting but Let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to start with a prayer because we know without Holy Spirit, this would not be possible. So, Lord, I just thank you for this time, God. I thank you for this message. I thank you for your word. Um, I thank you for your presence just with us this day, God. And I pray that as we read your word, it would come alive in the hearts of everyone who's watching now and who will watch later. And they will really get the message of what you're trying to speak to their hearts, that they are enough. They are more than enough, um, and, and so thank you, Lord, for this time, in Jesus' name. Okay, let's jump right in. We're reading about Moses and the burning bush. How many of you are familiar with that? You know, if you grew up in church, you've probably heard the story a million times, but even as I read it again, I got a new revelation of who God is. So let me just start. I'm reading from the NIV. Exodus 3, it says this here. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. So Moses is in the middle of nowhere. He's in the wilderness. It's wild out there. Like he, just to give you context, he'd run away from Egypt about 40 years beforehand. So here is Moses as 80, 80 years old, tending the flock of his sheep in the middle of nowhere, and then an angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. And so he's curious and he thought, huh, I will go over and see the strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up? So in this here, I'm like, okay, if you saw a burning bush in the middle of the wilderness that was burning but not consumed, you'd probably stop and say, what is that? So God got his attention. And it says here, when the Lord saw that he'd gone over to look, God called him from the bush, from within a bush. <laughs> I love that. I love that God can show up anywhere. So if you think God can't see you, you are mistaken. He will show up when he wants to tell you something. And he called him. He said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. And then he said, God said, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. He's like, wow, okay, God has literally come to me in a bush. What do I do? And I would feel the same way. I'd be like, oh, okay. And the Lord said, I've indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers. And I'm concerned about their suffering. I love this line. He said, I'm concerned about their suffering. So if you're suffering, if you're in a place of suffering, God is concerned about you. You know, I think about people in Afghanistan and everything that's going on now. And I'm encouraged as I read this because God has heard their cries. He's heard our cries for them. And he's sending someone right here, Moses. Verse 8. So God says, so I've come down in rescue to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. 
the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, and all the ites. So God is coming to rescue them. And when God comes to rescue, he works through people. And he wants to work through Moses. And so, verse 9. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are pressing them. So now, go. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to the Lord, um, excuse me, God. <laughs> I can see him sitting in the middle of the desert like, okay, <laughs> you want to do all that and I'm going to go? And he said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? I'm sure at this point, Moses being 80 years old is like, um, God, do you know how old I am? Like, wh what do you mean I'm going to go? But that's exactly what God meant. And God replied to him, he said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you've brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship the Lord your God on this mountain. I love that God assures him, like, I know this is shocking, but I'm going to go with you. I'm not just sending you off by yourself. And then Moses said to God again, he had all these butts like, um, <laughs> hello, God. Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, what is his name? What am I going to tell them? So he's like, okay, if I go, then what do I say? Like, I have no idea what to say. Of course, this is where God reveals himself. And I love this. He reveals himself as the I am. I'm sorry, give me a second because I'm, it's like sweaty over here. <laughs> oh, it's hot. Okay, I just need to blow. So God reveals to him himself as the great I am. And he said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I love that. God has revealed himself as I am, the one who causes all things to be. In this place reveals himself to Moses. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord your God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. And I love this. And this applies to us, to you and I. He said, this is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. That, that means we will call him this. I am Yahweh, the one who causes all things to be. And so the story goes on. God continues to tell him what to do and how he's going to rescue the Egyptians and, and everything and, and how he will stretch out his hand and open the sea and how Pharaoh will resist. God is literally giving Moses play by play. He's like, I'm sending you here, but I'm telling you what's going to happen so that you can be assured that it is me that's sending you. I love that God does that. As he asks you to do something, he reveal what is to come. And then we go to chapter four. Um, okay, so then Moses has all these permutations and what ifs and buts and okay, well God, first of all, uh, what if they don't believe me and God's like, I'll go with you. Um, and then now verse in, um, Exodus 4, he says, uh, God, what if they don't believe me or listen to me? And they say, the Lord did not appear to you. Like, what if this, does, this doesn't work? And God said to him, what's in your hand? And he said, a staff. And then Lord said, throw it on the ground. And basically he does, and it turns into a snake. So God performs a miracle answering Moses's objections. He's like, okay, here, let me show you what I can do in your hand. What's in your hand? And whatever was in his hand is what God used. And that's what God does for you. Whatever is in your hand is exactly what he's going to use. And he turned it into a snake and then he turned it back into a staff. And then not only that, he was like, put your hand in your cloak. And then his hand turned leprous. It was like diseased. And it was like, I'm sure it was scary. And then he said, put it back and he healed it. So God is doing all these things. And he's saying, if they don't believe you, if they don't pay attention to the first sign, they'll pay attention to the second. He's showing him signs and wonders. <laughs> but then still, Moses, verse 10, uh, he says, Pardon your servant, Lord. I've never been eloquent, neither in the past, nor since you've spoken to your servant. I'm slow of speech and tongue. As if God didn't know that. Moses is telling God, like, um, I'm not very good at speaking. So <laughs> I think you have the wrong one, basically. 
And so God's like, who gave human beings their mouths? Is it not I? Go, I will help you speak. And then again, Moses is like, but, another but, how many times would we do that? <laughs> but God, um, how about you send someone else? <laughs> this makes me laugh because I'm like, after everything God has said and done, Moses is still not convinced. And he's like, please send someone else. So this is where I come to the point I wanted to make today, really, is if you ever forget that you are enough, remember these points. And these are, I hope this will help you. As I was meditating on this, this is what the Lord revealed to me. He said, number one, remember God knows how to get your attention exactly where you are exactly where you are if you are even in this pandemic sometimes you might have feel, felt like okay i'm not seeing as many people i'm not getting as many contacts i'm not doing this or i'm so poor i'm in the middle of nowhere what god does god know where i am he knows how to get your attention he knows that you are exactly where you are and he knows how to reach you even if moses was 80 i'm sure after he fled uh, Egypt, he was probably like, you know what? I'm not usable anymore. Does it really matter? Uh, my Instagram reel does not look good. You know, <laughs> it was probably quite boring for 40 years. He's sitting there with shepherds, I mean, with sheep. But God knew how to get his attention and he got his attention in the middle of the bush. As it said in the verse where it says Moses was tending flock, he was tending the flock of his father-in-law. So he wasn't doing anything spectacular. So I wanna encourage you, you don't have to be doing anything spectacular or out of the ordinary for God to know where you are and to get your attention. And number two, remember you are created by God to be a solution, knowing all your faults. In other words, God knew all your faults before he called you. Moses was a, a solution even before he was born. He was drawn out of the water. He was placed and grew up in Pharaoh's house. Before he even knew what he was called to do, God knew that he was going to call Moses and he was going to be a solution for the people. Moses' whole life was set up for such a time as this. He didn't even know it till he was 80. So God knew exactly what he was doing in Moses' life and God knows what he's doing in yours. Just know that God knew why he created you. And, and I say faults and all, Moses talks about his, you know, as it says here, but Moses said, pardon your servant, please um, send someone else. <laughs> I just laugh at that because I think Isaiah is like, here I am, Lord, send me. And Moses is like, um, Lord, send someone else. I can't do this. But God knew that he was a stutterer. He knew he was slow of speech. He knew his faults. God knew that he'd actually killed an Egyptian 40 years earlier because he was trying to defend an Israelite. He knew that. And despite knowing all that, God still chose him. So I want you to remember that you're created by God to be a solution. And then my third point, remember what is in your hand. What's in your hand? Is it a phone? Is it a pen? What has God placed in your hand? Sometimes we look at what we don't have, especially finances. We're like, oh, I don't have the money. If God's like, go do this, go build a business that's gonna help all these people. And you're like, uh, did you look at my account, God? Like, do you understand what's in there? Or do you, you feel like, God, I'm too young. Like, I don't know how to do this. Or I'm too old. Nobody cares anymore. God's like, what is in your hand? If you know what's in your hand, that's exactly what God is going to use. And I love that in um, chapter 3, verse 2, the Lord said to him, what's in your hand? A staff, Moses replied. And the Lord said, throw it on the ground. That's exactly what God used to show him, I'm going to use what's in your hand to perform miracles. So don't let that be an excuse for you like, oh, I don't have this. When God calls you and speaks to you and asks you to do something, he knows what you have and what you don't have. But remember what's in your hand and know that what's in your hand is enough for whatever assignment God has called you to do. And then my final point, remember who is with you. And this is so important. 
um, God revealed himself as the great I am. As he said in um, verse 14, he said, I am who I am. He is Yahweh. He's the one who causes all things to be. If you say, okay, I need finances, God's like, I am your provision. If you say, I need healing, I'm your healer. If you say, I need direction, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God is everything we need. And so if he says, I'm going to go with you and I'm going to help you and I'm going to show you the way, believe him because he's God and he created you. And I love what he said to Moses. He says, the Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Is it not me? Who gives them wealth? Who gives them whatever they need? Is it not I? Now go. I will help you. Oh, every time I read it, I'm like, okay, God, I can do this. I can do this. You can do this. You are enough. You know, and I'm speaking to myself sometimes. I feel like inadequate. Like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to help, you know, as I, you know, work full time and I, I'm a wife and a mom and I'm like, how am I going to do this? And God's putting stuff in my heart and I'm thinking, huh, me? Like, do you, do you know what I have? And he reminds me, Simi, you know, I created you. I'm going to be with you. Everything you are is enough. And whoever, whatever your name is, fill in the blank. You're enough. You're enough. And that's why Jesus came and died on the cross because we're enough. And anything that we don't have, he fills the sufficiency. He makes us enough. Because we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And if you're listening and you've never encountered God and you, you don't even know that he knows who you are, I just want to invite you to pray with me right now. And just invite him in. And let him show you all the things that he's revealed to Moses and to me and to so many people who put their faith in him. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have revealed yourself as the great I am. That you are the one that created each and every person watching this. That you love us beyond measure, God. You loved us so much, you went to the cross and you died for our sins and our faults and everything we don't have. And you rose again. And you just said, believe in me. That's all we have to do is believe in the one that you sent. And we will have eternal life. And not just life in heaven, but Jesus, as you said, that you've come that we would have life here on earth and have it more abundantly. And so I just ask that whoever is watching now, God, would just put their faith in you to know that you're the one that gives life, restores life, creates life, and shows them the purpose for which they are living, God. I just ask that you would show them that they are enough. They're more than enough to do exactly what you've called them to do. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks, guys, for joining. Thank you for listening, and I hope you will always remember that. You are absolutely enough. Until next time. Bye.